So you finally did it. You found your first rental property and you are ready to start the journey to financial freedom. But after you close, what do you need to do before you bring in your first tenant? What might you be forgetting? My name is Mindy Jensen and I'm the host of the Bigger Pockets Money podcast. I'm also the author of First Time Home Buyer. I've been investing in real estate since 1998. On top of all of that, I'm a registered agent in the state of Colorado. So I think it's safe to say that I know a little bit about real estate. Today, we're talking about how to start your investing journey off on the right foot. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, Steadily. Securing insurance for your rental property shouldn't be complicated and time-consuming. Traditional insurance companies often demand long lead times and tedious paper forms. You need insurance that works like the modern tools you already rely on. Enter Steadily.com, your solution for fast and affordable landlord insurance. Say goodbye to the hassle of waiting and get next day coverage that only takes minutes to obtain all from the convenience of your phone. Steadily was founded by landlords who know the unique needs of this industry. Whether you're managing single-family properties, overseeing short-term rentals, or handling apartment buildings and beyond, Steadily can secure the best coverage at the best price for your real estate investments. Discover how Steadily can save you both time and money on your rental property insurance. Visit Steadily.com for a commitment-free quote tailored to your needs today. Number one. Walk through the property. If it's vacant, turn to your home inspection report. If this is your first rental property, you got one, right? So go through it and look for health and safety issues that need to be repaired that didn't get taken care of by the seller. Next, look for maintenance or deferred maintenance issues that are going to need to be taken care of anyway and do them now. Your new tenants will thank you for this and so will your wallet. And if it's not vacant, schedule a time to meet your tenants and ask them to prepare a list of items that need to be repaired prior to the meeting. You'll start your relationship off on the right foot by letting them know you care about the condition of the property. Number two, learn how to screen a tenant. My first rental started out a lot like other people's. I turned my primary residence into a rental. Our first experience was great. A couple of college-age kids wanted to rent it out over the summer while they did an internship at a corporation down the road. They were nice, they paid all their rent up front, and since they did, we didn't need to do a background check. Yay! They left it moderately clean when they vacated. I'm not sure if you caught a couple of those red flags that I mentioned. We didn't either because A, we didn't know, and B, they didn't turn out bad for us. Let's look at those red flags. Paying all the rent up front. Now, this sounds super awesome. You don't have to worry about your tenant not paying rent. You don't have to hunt them down for the rent. But... This could be a red flag in that they are paying the rent up front so you leave them alone. They could be planning all sorts of nefarious things with your property. And since the rent is paid and they're not asking you to repair anything, you'll leave them alone. It's not always a red flag, but it's definitely something to look a little deeper into. Now, our guys needed to pay their rent up front because the corporation gave them the money for it and they just passed it along to us. They wanted to be responsible. And remember how we didn't need to do a background check because they paid all their rent up front? Yeah, don't skip that step either. Our guys were fine, but they could have been totally lying about that internship. They could have been lying about what they were planning to do with the property. And how would we know? We didn't run a background check. Our second tenant was a little bit different. Technically, he paid his rent on time and he left when we didn't renew his lease. But he did not leave the house clean. And some of the stuff he left behind was really gross. We could have kept his security deposit, but we didn't. In fact, I don't even think we collected a security deposit. That is a mistake. And while these are not nearly as bad as some of the absolute horror stories that I have read on the Bigger Pockets forums, they could have been much, much worse. We could have rented to the numerous people asking if it would be okay if they ran an in home daycare center in our house. Uh, no. Or those who didn't have the security deposit up front, but they could come up with it over the course of the next six months. And don't forget those applicants who had credit scores that were so low, I didn't even know the system went that low until I ran their report. Your credit score is, in part, a history of your ability to make your payments on time. You know what I love? Rent on the first of the month or before. You know what I hate? Reminding my tenants that they didn't pay rent. They don't need the reminder. They know they didn't pay the rent. All of this to say, you need to learn how to screen your tenants. Bigger Pockets has one of the best articles I have ever read about tenant screening. We will include the link below. Number three, get a great lease. And that one that you downloaded from that free website you found online, that's not going to cut it. 
that isn't worth what you paid for it, which is nothing because it was free. Bigger Pockets offers attorney-reviewed, state-specific leases and related documents at biggerpockets.com slash LL Forbes. Again, we'll include that link below. These forms are $99 a piece or free with your Bigger Pockets Pro membership. Don't forget the insurance. And homeowner's insurance isn't the right type of policy. You need a landlord policy, which is the same but different. And yeah, most insurance companies that offer homeowner's policies also offer landlord policies. And you should absolutely compare rates and bundling discounts with your current insurance provider. Don't forget companies like Steadily who specialize in landlord insurance. Now, I'd love to be able to say this is all you need to know about landlording, but that's not true. We both know that's not true. This is just scratching the surface. You need to make an account at biggerpockets.com if you have not already. So you can dive deep into the blog, the forums, the books, the podcasts, the videos, the boot camps, and so much more that Bigger Pockets has to offer. Did I say it was a free account? It's free. I want to hear from you. What steps did you take when you bought your first rental? What steps did you forget? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this. This is Mindy Jensen signing off.